me. I'd like to appreciate um, the uh, International Volunteer Corporation um, and the University, the World University of Service for Canada for, for hosting this and, and allowing a space for us to bring you up to speed with what's happening on the post-2015 development agenda um, and how we can engage with this incredible constituency um, going forward. Um, I think that I hope that you have been following it, but um, just to say that really next year presents a momentous occasion where we will uh, again um, gavel another set of sustainable development goals after the MDGs in 2000. Um, but this time there really are many transformations that we're expecting. One where we really look at sustainable development from a much broader perspective that is universal, that is integrated, really seeing how the economic, the environmental and the social agendas come together uh, so that we address the challenges of people and planet in, over the next 15 years. The other transformation will be going beyond just the overseas development assistance that we have looked at for development. That will remain important, particularly for low-income countries, uh, but also to leverage um, and, uh, you know, a real showing of the commitment of the global partnership to development. Um, however, it will need more resources. This is a much bigger agenda, and so therefore really looking to see how we can make a better use of domestic resources, innovative financing, a broader unlocking of resources for what is a substantive agenda. The third, of course, will be the climate change agreement at the end of next year. Uh, which will mean uh, so much more for for uh, for people and what we do in sustainable development um, and the environment that we live in, um, if we can get that that agreement as ambitious as possible. So these three coming next year, where are we now? Um, the member states who have um, begun a long process over two years, just uh, about two years now, have finished with the work of uh, the Open Working Group. It has produced. Um, 17 goals, 169 targets uh, to uh, inform the negotiation. We also have an experts group um, from finance uh, outcomes where they have presented a framework for how uh, this agenda can be resourced and it will be discussed as we um, arrive in, in Addis Ababa next year in July for the Financing for Development meeting. We have two additional pieces of work. One is the technology workshops in which um, our ambassadors from Switzerland and uh, Brazil have taken a great deal of time trying to fashion recommendations of how we address technology in the upcoming agenda. And then last but not least, uh, we also have the President of the General Assembly, um, past who has uh, brought in the discussion on accountability, um, a general debate on, on that one, um, and then a dialogue on that. And then we went out to the regions to really um, speak through about what that would entail, how we would make promises um, within a new framework to people and uh, what sort of mechanisms would we need to hold um, governments uh, accountable to those promises. So all of this is um, really in a bid to try and get a universal agenda, one that is integrated. Uh, the ambition needs to be there because we all know that the challenges that we face in the world today are numerous. Um, from, from the backdrop of the conflicts that are there, uh, huge unemployment amongst our young people, the migration issues, certainly our diseases have not gone. Um, and we have a great deal of challenges with education and the skill sets that we need to impart uh, to young people and old people uh, to engage with economies, ensuring that you know we are uh, not leaving anyone behind, but we are giving people a life of dignity, that there is hope at the end um, where we have to address the eradication of poverty over the next 15 years. I think it's important here that with the Millennium Development Goals, lessons to learn is that they were not as well known as they could have been. They didn't have the same ownership that we would have liked to have seen them go much further. However, they still do remain unfinished business. They still have many lessons to learn on what worked. Um, and the things that didn't work so well. And so we hope that this unfinished business will be carried through into the next agenda. In the same vein, as we come to look at, you know, the different participation from constituencies in this process, member states have engaged with it that they really do own this agenda um, and are very enthusiastic about um, an ambitious outcome. They also have had an unprecedented process where it has been open and transparent and civil society, young people, the aged, uh, many vulnerable groups, uh, parliamentarians, all have been involved um, in shaping the agenda so far. 
In going forward, we hope that that will also remain. And so the next and the last of the year, the last mile to September next year, um, we will look very much forward to your participation. Looking at the set of goals that we have now, which essentially form the main basis for, um, the, uh, for the negotiations, it's important to try to keep the ambition that's there. It is important, if possible, to really improve what is there. Certainly, we don't want to see less, and, and that's always the challenge of a negotiation with many member states um, that we may uh, come back from those ambitions. So we do need the momentum. We need your voices. We need that collaboration across borders, um, from global to local, uh, really bringing this agenda home before it's time so that we can hit the ground running in September 2015. There are many issues there that I'm sure you can get engaged with, uh, certainly finishing off the MDGs from the poverty agenda and inequality, which is a, a big uh, new um, aspect of it that wasn't in the MDGs, uh, dealing with inequality across uh, countries, uh, within countries, and within regions. But we also want to deal with the unfinished business of health and education, water and sanitation. We want to see that now that we see more inclusive economies, that we're talking about the resilience agenda for climate change, um, and that we're really looking to see what sort of infrastructure, clean energy, how can we reduce our carbon footprint, that we get a balanced agenda for people and planet. I think what is going to be very important here is that while we have a heavy substantive agenda, it will be carried by the quality and the robustness of the governance agenda, how we will have access to justice, how institutions will be strengthened, how we are able to ensure peaceful societies. In the same vein, the means of implementation will be critical as well. And, and this all, I think, uh, brings together a very uh, a robust package that I believe can address the challenges um, that we have in the world today. Um, the role of volunteers in particular, um, clearly you have a very big role to play at the local, at the local um, level where you will bring to your colleagues in, in the regional and the global um, level a sense of the urgency um, of the prioritization of many of these things. No one country will do this the same way. And I think the coming together of so many of your organizations across regions in a universal agenda, certainly one size doesn't fit all. This is a rights-based agenda, um, and we do want to see how different regions uh, will respond and what sort of facilitation they will need for that response um, to address these issues um, that have been tabled by our member states. Um, there, there are, uh, as I say, many opportunities over the next year. Um, I would encourage you to engage with the program, which will be out, um, certainly out for the financing for development, and on the post-2015, in the next few weeks, the co-facilitators from Kenya and from Ireland uh, will be uh, elaborating on those modalities um, of what uh, will be available to engage with as they uh, plan the negotiation. Uh, the Secretary General will be uh, producing a synthesis report. Uh, this is really bringing all these issues together um, into a report that can keep ambition and momentum, but also a lot of clarity um, around how these pieces come together and will be delivered at the country level. We hope that it will inform um, a good part of the uh, negotiations as they begin, um, but we also uh, are very uh, aware of the, the kind of support that we're going to need for uh, reinforcing the accountability issues around this agenda. Uh, the Secretary General has recently um, inaugurated an advisory panel on the data revolution. This is a, another area that I think that um, volunteers can be involved going forward. We hope to see what their recommendations are, for what an outline for this, that we may all understand um, what the data revolution should mean for sustainable development, but there will be recommendations on how to carry this forward from the country to the global level. And I hope that uh, we'll be able to share this with you at the beginning of November, um, that we can ensure by September, we're looking at some robust baselines, disaggregated data, um, and uh, a lot more information from statistics that can help uh, the United Nations uh, develop indicators to measure what we need to do over the next 15 years. Uh, let me stop here and, again, uh, really thank you very much for inviting me and giving us this space uh, to have this discussion. Okay, Ms. Uh, Mohammed, um, 
there may be questions coming and it may be by uh, chat or by computer. It will depend on if the audio is uh, not too noisy at, uh, in Lima. We may be using a second computer. Yes, okay. I'm ready for this. Okay. So we'll just check the chat in case it comes by chat. Miss Mahmoud, can you hear me? Yes. It's in yes, Lima. Yes, I can. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for uh, being uh, able to join us in this, shall we say, eco-friendly way. <laughs> um, and thank you so much for your address. Uh, I uh, we have a few, we have an engaged audience here, and uh, we uh, would like to uh, ask you uh, just a few questions, if possible. Uh, over the, uh, it's been several years now that volunteer groups have carried out several key activities in the efforts to integrate volunteering in the post-2015 development agenda. And recently, the President of the UN General Assembly called for the recognition of volunteerism at the high-level stock-taking event on post-2015, which is, was contributions to the synthesis report. Um, so, and it was, high, it was stressed that local bodies, national governments, and international policymakers need to recognize the contribution of volunteers to sustainable development. Uh, and he also called on the, on the Secretary General to include volunteerism in a synthesis report. And seeing that it does not appear in the SDGs, which are under negotiation, how can we make sure that the contributions that volunteers make are acknowledged in the synthesis report? Thank you very much. Um, a very pertinent question. I think um, that they're not in the SDGs or targets does not mean that volunteers will not be recognized and, and be part of this. I think one of the things that we are uh, very aware of is that whatever we do at this international level, at the country level, we must allow countries um, and, and local governments to take ownership of this when it comes to implementation. Um, that's as good as it will be implemented. We won't be able to do that from this level. However, um, having said that, I think um, that in the negotiation, it will be certainly as we provide uh, the synthesis report, when we look to the backdrop of um, those that have facilitated um, development, not just going forward, but in the past, we will recognize volunteers and, and the role that they need to play in both the means of implementation, um, but also crossing and collaborating and partnering um, in terms of uh, achieving the accountability aspect of this agenda as well. I think it, it uh, certainly will, volunteers will continue to play a role in the implementation of much of what we do, particularly when we start speaking to the resilience agenda. It's been a very difficult conversation when it comes to climate change, when it comes to the humanitarian um, efforts that are made. And uh, I think this is where over the next few months, um, we will be shaping much better um, and articulating uh, how that can happen. It will, of course, help that what you see now and where you see it missing, if you can write back and provide us um, with uh, some of the language, the solutions that you think um, would better reflect your inclusion and your recognition. Um, this is, I think, an, an opportunity, um, certainly for the synthesis report that will be ready for the member states by the end of November. Um, I can say that already the Beyond 2015 campaign has um, given us a red uh, flag letter, which has been very helpful in, uh, in sh showing us where more ambition can be had, but also where there are some gaps. This morning, for instance, those um, who are involved in migration had a discussion with us where they also discussed the challenges um, across the globe in a universal agenda to migration, forced and planned. Otherwise, um, clearly a rights agenda, um, but very complicated. And uh, the recommendations that they have made in their communication, also we are looking at uh, to see how this can be better framed in the post-2015 development agenda. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Mohammed. Um, taking into account, uh, taking into account that volunteers or volunteer groups encompass a diversity of actors. Of course, we have large numbers of civil society organisations, but we have private sector, corporate volunteering, government agencies. 
and multilateral organizations. Uh, what advice could you give us as to what governments expect from volunteer groups in terms of supporting them in crafting the SDGs and also, also of course, in the successful implementation, as you've talked about? Well, I think, again, we've got a very good base to take um, a lot of what has been proposed. The 17 goals provide us with enough substance to understand where we're going. We're not going much less than that. If anything, we will try to do more and deeper. Um, I think that the country level is the place at which volunteers can actually help to begin to translate this and what would be the implications. I think asking within country plans and their visions, should this agenda be approved, what would then be the implications and where would be the role and responsibility of different actors and partners. This is not a discussion that has really been had at the level and at the depth of which we would like it to happen. And I think that the UN agencies at the country level are trying to um, you know, partner with others to make this happen. But I think that your, your own organizations can help facilitate that uh, with government and with parliaments um, and with the private sector. As you say, you have a range um, of uh, volunteering that goes across different constituencies. Um, so again, the country level I think is important right now. What we're saying up here has to be implemented at the country level. That gap needs to be closed. Um, so again, discussion on the implications of this and a lot more knowledge I think is required to be shared um, at the country level and at the regional level with the work that you do. Thank you. Uh, I'm not quite sure how you are on time. Uh, if you have a few yes, more minutes. Uh, yes, okay. Um, um, the SDGs are for now addressing the issue of governance. Uh, and um, for instance, uh, in, uh, in SDG 16, by making a, an explicit comment, commitment at building effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. And uh, taking in, uh, into account that volunteering is a positive and pro proactive form of civic engagement, do you see volunteer groups as strategic partners working alongside governments and other agencies, making sure that we support better participation of people in decision making and as a potential contributor to a future accountability mechanism to monitor the implementation? Yes, I do. In principle, I think definitely new partners and especially volunteers across um, uh, the different sectors, not just in one, but I think that because you are in different constituencies, you bring a knowledge of how to work out of silos. And I think that that's going to be a really important part of the integrated agenda. However, having said that, each country is different in the way in which its institutions will need to be strengthened to respond to these. And I think that um, that's where even as we go through the next year, clarification of these different challenges would be helpful. So um, where, the, where countries are at different levels of development, we can um, be a little bit more uh, nuanced in the way in which we are making the demands. What you don't want to do is to set up countries to fail. There, there are countries at different levels that need to reach and we need to help them with that and facilitate it. Um, as we said with the UN agencies, we're looking at how do we respond to being fit for purpose? What kind of skill sets do we need to help um, implement this agenda? And where will those interfaces be? And that's a conversation that we need to start, um, I, I would say, yesterday. Um, in some countries, this is happening, so let's share best practice um, or good practice of this happening. In some countries, it almost looks impossible that you, could pos that you would get this environment. Wh which of those countries and, and how can we help um, here from the member states that are representing those countries bring them closer uh, to trying to have this integrated and collaborative approach um, to delivering on this agenda. It's much too big an agenda for any one constituency to do. It has to be done through partnership. We have to understand how we can, we can find the gains um, from uh, being integrated in our approach. Uh, we may very well, difficult to explain to different committees of a parliament, for instance, that one sector would use its resources yet have impact in several other sectors. Those other sectors would like the money to do what they need to do. And, and I think that, you know, this is going to be new, um, but, no, you know, no one wants to feel as though they're losing resources to another. People do want to be um, recognized for their efforts. Uh, so that's a difficult balance in, in, um, in uh, 
being recognized for efforts in, in implementing or having an impact and an agenda, even though you may not be in the driver's seat. So I, I think, you know, working through um, the different components you see, the poverty and inequality, looking at the integrated nature of the economic, the environmental, and the um, social agenda, um, and really looking to see in terms of governance um, what really is, is of, of, uh, of a priority in a particular country. Some of our countries are coming out of conflict and so therefore have no institutions in place. Uh, the institutions they need are not just those that would facilitate a scale up of the hardware that you need to put in place for infrastructure and schools and hospitals. They also need that that will build the capacity um, and education of people, skill sets, addressing programs where they are different uh, when you're looking at reintegration of people into society uh, with different needs. Um, so really, uh, I think the specificity of it is, is about what you do at the country level. But uh, maybe if we work back from the country level, are we seeing for implementation what we need to um, as the entry point at the international level? Are we asking the right questions, pr proposing the right goals? Um, uh, at a later stage, um, it's going to be very important, maybe not so late at the beginning of the year, uh, where we start to have a parallel process of working on the indicators uh, so that when we come to define uh, more clearly the role of the high-level political forum, which will take the member states' vehicle for um, coordinating and making coherent delivery on the sustainable development agenda, that indicators that really reinforce the targets and the goals and that we can, uh, you know, challenge government with in terms of measuring um, inputs, but also the outputs and outcomes. Thank you so much, Ms. Mohammed. Uh, I think there are many of us here in the room uh, who have personally had the pleasure of hearing you either in New York or in Oslo, as in my case. Uh, and it's always captivating, but I must say it's been exceptionally inspiring to hear you speak also directly to us here in the volunteer involving community gathered here in Lima. Uh, again, thank you so much for uh, being able to join us. We are a vibrant community who are, you know, we've been working for several years now to show also how, how uh, our communities are contributing to um, achieving the MDGs. And we're even here in Lima working on on the commitments that we have made and are ready to make uh, when it comes to the future SDGs. And uh, I'm certain that you will be hearing from us. We will be sending you our commitments uh, to make them visible to you. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank, thank you Mama. very much. It's my pleasure. And I really do look forward to hearing the outcomes from this particular meeting that you have and then really seeing you um, loud and clear at these major events, particularly the financing for development in Addis. I think it is important that we find the resources. They are there. We need to unlock them. And your voice will be important. This is commitment and dedication over decades. And, and I really look forward to that. It certainly gives me a lot more energy uh, for the work I have to do when I do in, inter, interface with you. Thank you very much.